Hello, my art-loving friends. I am Deborah Kay, and I welcome you to Paint with a Passion. Today, we're going to paint the beautiful Cosmic Grace. Grace is absolutely stunning, and you are just going to love your finished painting. Here's my recipe. You can pause here to gather what you need, or just refer to the list in the description area below this video. So get all your goodies together and let's go make the magic happen as we paint with a passion. I'm painting on a 9 by 12 flat panel canvas. These come pre-primed so you don't have to do any prep work prior to painting, except of course you have to try to get the wrapping off. I buy these canvi, is it canvases or canvi? Anyways, I buy these in packs when they're on sale. Now, I've heard some artists say they don't like them because they bow or they warp, but I've never had that problem, and maybe it's because the paint I use is thin and it dries real quick, so that might have something to do with it. You can paint grace on anything you'd like, and it can be bigger or smaller, round or square, wood or stone. I think this would even look really cool on a bottle. I am going to paint an ombre style background using three colors. I'm speaking of the French ombre. It means tones of color that shade into each other, graduating from dark to light. In French, it means shaded. So don't confuse this with the Spanish ombre, which is spelled with an H. Something completely different, my friends. Starting with eggplant purple, I'm going to paint halfway down the canvas, and I'm using a one-inch bristle brush. It's very difficult to say, bristle brush. I'm not looking for a completely smooth transition, but if I was, I would be using a soft bristled brush, or perhaps sponges. Then, I'm going to add white at the bottom, and without cleaning off my brush, I'm going to brush back and forth, working my way up to the purple. I want the top of the sky to be pretty dark, so it just really contrasts against the moon and the stars that we're going to add later. Then I just keep working back and forth, up and down, adding more paint when it's needed, and um, just keep going until I have it exactly the way I want it. Now most ombre paintings are a very smooth, perfectly blended transition of color but that's not really what I'm going for. I guess I'm kind of going um, for a messy sky. Uh, this doesn't need to be perfect because a lot of it is going to be covered up by our moon and by the beautiful grace. While our canvas is drying, let's get to creating Grace's face template. Now, I recommend you practice a lot. And here are some of my test runs. I gradually drew profiles bigger and bigger once I got the shape of the face how I wanted it. And then just made sure to measure the size that I'm going to want Grace's face to be. I even drew a mock-up of the moon and the face size so I knew roughly the dimensions I was going to need. And I just used plain paper to draw my final profile and then cut it out. Make sure to keep both sides of the cutout because you're actually going to use both of them when it's time to add her to the canvas. All right, so let's add our moon. I'm centering my large stencil and placing it so that the second to the largest outline sits exactly where I want it in the sky. Using my chalk pencil, I'm tracing the entire circle. Now, my stencil leaves little breaks in the lines, so I just twist it a little bit, and then that way it's lined up and I can fill in the gaps. I'm using an angled brush to fill the moon in with white. Now, the angled brush makes it very easy to paint along a curve, and the reason I'm not using my super skinny fine lining brush to do the outer circle is because I don't want to leave a thick, heavy line around the outer rim of the moon. 
I especially don't want to leave a heavy line where Grace's face is going to overlap the moon because the line will be visible um, unless you plan on resonating your piece. And even then, it's still you might still be able to see that it's raised up beneath her face. Next, I'm applying a second coat of the white paint using a sponge. I'm using a sponge because I don't want any brush marks. But also, I'm going to be blending in some purple shadows uh, with the white while it's still wet, so I might as well use the same sponge. I did a little more blending to the moon shadows once I was off camera, but um, I just kept working it until I got it exactly like I wanted it. If you get to a point where the moon turns all one color, just wait a little bit for the paint to dry and then start again. Blending takes practice, so don't worry if it isn't perfect on the first try. That's the beauty of painting. You can just paint right over the top of it. Um, and I do recommend trying to leave the edges of the moon bright white, so it really gives a glowing effect. All right, my friends, let's add grace. You want to make absolute sure that your moon is completely dry before you lay down the cutout. You don't have to use a cutout, but I decided to show you this technique because we're going to be painting over the moon we just made, and I want her profile to be perfect the first time. I'm going to position the cutout of Grace where I want her to overlap the moon. And then I'm going to trace around her face. And then I'm going to sketch in where the top of her hairline should come in. You'll want to use a lead pencil over the white areas of the moon uh, to trace. And then you can trace the rest of it using white chalk. Just make sure to go very light pressure with the lead pencil because sometimes you can see it through the paint. And then um, you can also go ahead and sketch on some hair at this point. Now that I have Grace's face traced on, I'm lining up the other half of my cutout with her face and I'm going to tape it in place. And just make sure that when you do this, you use painter's tape or something that's not going to pull up the paint uh, on your background. Now I'm going to add the first coat to Grace's face. I'm using a flat brush and I am going with glorious gold for the base. 
Now, as you're painting on the face base, um, if you find that your gold paint is not giving um, the same coverage over the moon area as it is over the background area, you can actually paint the base of her face all in white first and then apply your first layer of gold over it. Does that make sense? I think it does. I'm going with it. Okay, so now that my glorious gold is dry, I'm using a fan brush with a very small amount of antique copper and I'm just gonna wisp it on. I don't know if wisping is the correct technical painting term, but I'm going with it. So you just put a little on the brush, on the end of the brush, and then blot it on your palette because you don't want to fully cover the face. You just want to streak it back and forth. Now with a clean brush, I'm going to repeat the same process with the rose gold. Um, and then I'm just going to keep wisping between all three colors until I have the balance exactly like I want it. You can even load your brush with two colors at the same time, one on each end, and then wisp away. Is that like slip sliding away? We're just slip sliding away. Oh, okay, stop me now. Alrighty, it's time to start in on Grace's hair. I'm using an angled brush to paint in her hair base. Again, I'm using the angled brush because it works great on curves and it's not going to leave a raised um, line outline. Plus, painting in all of this space for Grace's hair with a super skinny fine line and brush, that would pretty much take forever. All right, my friends, let's bring Grace to life. Using my super skinny fine lining brush, I'm going to outline her profile. And I'm also gonna to touch up her hairline a little bit 
but I'm gonna be careful not to use too much paint because I don't wanna leave um, a raised dividing line. Now, as you reload your paint and you're continuing a line, whether it's curved or straight, you always want to touch down a little way back over the top of where you left off. Trying to continue the line after or next to where you left off will always leave a junction spot instead of a smooth continuation. I used my white chalk pencil to draw in her features. I'm gonna keep it very simple on purpose. Peaceful, elegant, graceful. You can do an open eye if you prefer. You can do a flatter, hairier eyebrow if you like. Her lips can be parted if you prefer. Paint what you feel, or you can follow my example. No matter what, she's going to be absolutely beautiful. I'm going to be adding some streaks to Grace's hair, so I'm using my white chalk pencil to draw in some suggestive lines for the streaks. A lot of times what I draw and then what I actually end up painting, they turn out different, but I do think it's very helpful to have a basic guide to follow. I'm going to use my favorite gold, rose gold, for Grace's hair streaks. These streaks of hers remind me of my blonde streaks I sported many years ago. I loved my chunky blonde streaks. Okay, so I'm using my super skinny fine lining brush and I'm just painting wavy lines. Thin at the top of the hairline and then thicker as it gets to the bottom or some of them are gonna end up being skinny at the top and the bottom and just thick in the middle. It just depends on where I'm placing them. I was gonna do some curls, but I just wasn't feeling it. And like I was saying before, what I draw and then what I paint tends to be different depending on how I feel and what looks good in the moment. I pour small amounts of paint so that it doesn't dry out. And I really find these little bucket palettes very handy. Use one bucket up, take a break or whatever, load up the next one and just keep on a painting.
I'm erasing all of my chalk lines now so I can see what might need to be added or what might need to be touched up. And I'm cleaning up Grace's hairline again and I'm adding a little bit of space between where the streaks start at the hairline. Um, because it just didn't look right going all the way to the very edge of her hairline. I'm also smoothing the edges of the streaks um, where needed and cleaning up any gold that might have gone rogue. Hey, is it rogue gold or is it rose gold? That's the question, isn't it? Grace is so beautiful. I love it. Let's add some stars, shall we? I am using three of my small metal dotting tools. First, I'm adding just a few uh, stars with my largest dotting tool. Now, I only want a few because I really want them to stand out. Then, using my second to smallest dotting tool, and then the smallest one, I'm going to be sprinkling the sky, but I don't want to overdo it. Once the stars are dry, I'm going to add a little silver top dot to just the biggest dots. And that's going to add a special twinkle when the light catches them. Okay, so the final step is to seal the painting. I'm using DuraClear with a small sponge paint roller. It is hands down the best way to apply varnish to flat paintings. Obviously, it doesn't work for bottles and rocks and other things, but for a flat canvas, it totally rocks. I'm going to use a generous amount, but not too much. And um, I'm going to apply it and wait about 10 minutes. And then once the first coat's dry, I can apply my second coat. Make sure that you wash out your sponge immediately after each application. Um, this DuraClear will dry very quickly and it will ruin your sponge. If you have more than one sponge, you can submerge the first one in water until you're ready to wash them both out. 
Also, you can use a brush to add your varnish, completely up to you. Double check your canvas under the light, move it around, check for any spots that might need a touch up. And then the final step is to sign your art. Now, I always sign mine after I apply the varnish because it makes the script flow much easier. And I included a link to my video so that you can make your own super skinny fine line and brushes. And then just make sure that you varnish over your signature once the paint's all dry. Look at our stunning Cosmic Grace. She is just absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today to paint with a passion. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to painting again together real soon. Let me know what you think and also let me know what you'd like to see in future tutorials. Please remember to subscribe and hit that notification button. I wish you peace, love, and happiness now and always.